1955, when she became head of the Folk Music Research Department of the Jamaica School of Music. And her work in music has been wide and varied as performer, as consultant, as advisor, producer, composer, arranger, and as music educator. Miss Wiley has taken Jamaican music to many parts of the world, and she has been a featured performer in jazz festivals in the Caribbean, as well as in England, the Netherlands, Germany, France, and the United States. Her one-woman show, From the Cradle to the Grave, Jamaican Rhythm and Music in the Stages of Life, has been presented in the Caribbean as well as in England, Canada, the United States, and Germany. Miss Wiley has been a member of the National Dance Theatre Company since 1965, and its musical director since 1967. She has also been orchestra leader for many little theater movement pantomimes. She leads her own group, Wiley Rhythm, which has a repertoire of popular Latin, light classical music, and jazz. She has received many honors for her work in music and music education, including the National Honor of Order of Distinction. And in 2004, she received the Prime Minister's Award for Excellence in Theater and Music. The 2005 lecture is delivered in both speech and rhythm. The Grace Kennedy Foundation warmly welcomes our talented and accomplished lecturer, Miss Marjorie Wiley, and looks forward to an exciting and stimulating event. Thank you very much, Professor Leirani, Chairman, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first of all, I must say thank you to the Grace Foundation for recognizing that there is another side to my life. And although I'm quite sure that these words are not going to inform any change of any kind of policy, uh, I hope that you will enjoy some thoughts that I would like to share with you something that I am particularly passionate about, and that is the Jamaican heritage, particularly the heritage in music. But we need to start at the beginning, and I think Reverend Sam would appreciate this. The power of the beat, the vibratory nature of things. According to the Gospel of St. John, in the beginning was the word. The scientist's theory is that of the Big Bang. Not at all contradictory in my estimation, as both the word and the Big Bang are expressions of awesome power, resounding power, setting everything oscillating in vibratory motion. The vibration of particles and objects that produce sound in our bodies, in our world, and throughout nature demonstrate the existence of an energy that extends not only to the far corners of our galaxy, but to the whole universe. Astronomers tell us that a massive black hole releases sound waves in a deep bass pitch. In October 2003, the news website of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation posted information on NASA's orbiting Chandra X-ray Observatory, and that it was able to listen to sound waves coming from deep within the Perseus Cluster. This giant group of galaxies, 250 million light years from Earth, was being studied with great excitement and focus. This is a difficult fact for our minds to grasp as a light year is a distance that light travels in a year in a vacuum. What is interesting for those of a musical inclination is a fact that astrophysicists at NASA also found the pitch of the sound to be about 57 octaves below middle C, the note which is roughly in the middle of the standard piano keyboard and the frequency to be more than a million times deeper than the limits of human perception. Before, black holes were thought to give off energy as light and heat. 
Now we know that energy is also released as sound. At the other end of the spectrum are the vibrations of cells. Professor of Chemistry, Jim Jimshirsky, in a research laboratory at the University of California in Los Angeles, discovered that a minute cell of yeast observed through an atomic force microscope and subjected to computer imaging has a motion of its membranes recorded providing discernible high-pitched sound which can be listened to. The whole universe is alive with sound, humming melody and harmony, alive with rhythm, with sound waves being sent and received, sounds of stars and mud pools, crickets and toads, the songs of birds and dolphins, the buzzing of bees and the roar of the lion. To this we may add water crashing against rocks, the howling wind, rain showers and thunder. These sounds are omnipresent, often above and below the threshold of conscious hearing. So fundamental is a sound material that it must influence everything we experience through feeling and thinking. Music, however, is a special kind of sound. Whereas a bottle crashing to the floor produces unordered, unstructured sound waves, whose frequencies and volumes bear no relationship to each other, that is, noise. The patterns of vibration that produce music are organized into systems, elements of melody, harmony, rhythm, durational relationships, and clear proportions. Music is a language, a human language accompanying the stages of life and rites of passage, affecting emotions, levels of consciousness, spiritual response, and upliftment. During the 19th century, scientific research into the physiological effects of music measured the results of its action on heart rate, the circulatory system, blood pressure, and respiration. The findings were that body rhythms are affected by music. They can be decelerated and accelerated. Sound waves on entering the body stirred sympathetic vibrations in cells at an elemental molecular level and the conducting of sound through the cells is facilitated by the high water content of the body. And you only have to be working as hard as I was today to know about that water content. We call it perspiration. Today for me, it was sweat. Experiments have shown that the heart rate and breath can be slowed by listening to music with a steady regular pulse of about 60 beats a minute. The fairly well-known Canon in D by Johann Pachelbel, a late 17th century composer, works well in this instance. This process, called entrainment, demonstrates the tendency for two oscillating bodies to lock into phase so that they vibrate in the same pattern. Interestingly, Canon in D is very often used to accompany the entry into the church of bridesmaids at weddings. more relevant to our culture is syncopation and irregular subdivision of the beat, occurring when a note is played just ahead of 
or delayed beyond the listener's expectation. It is most often experienced as physically stimulating and exciting. <laughs> 